I'm Ben Foley from the Better Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily communion meditation, where today we're talking about getting the enemy to cease and desist. So Psalms 8, verse 2, it says, From the mouth of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength. Talking about God. God has established strength because of your adversaries to make the enemy and the revengeful, revengeful cease. So it's interesting. You look at this verse in a bunch of different translations It's translated in a bunch of different ways. For example, it could say you've ordained praise instead of established strength. You've established strength. You've ordained praise. You've ordained strength are some ways that that verse is translated. And it also says to make the enemy silence. And that word for silence in some of the translation is this word for cease. In the original Hebrew, it's the word that's translated as cease and desist. It's interesting. in, In our world today... You might see a cease and desist letter. When something someone's doing something wrong, they might get a cease and desist letter that's commanding them to stop whatever it is that they're doing. And it's usually coming in the form of a formal written letter. And so this, this idea just keeps coming to mind lately. And I really feel like God is trying to teach us something about this concept, about how to get the enemy to cease and desist in our lives. And so we're going to take communion over this today. Just asking him, asking us to show us, asking him to show us. But let's get started with our daily prayer. And then we'll get into our time of communion after that. Heavenly Father, I pray for everybody who's watching or listening, their families, their friends, everybody connected to them, and all of our church and governmental leaders. And I thank you for releasing us from darkness and transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear son. I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. And that Jesus was struck down, he was smitten, bruised and pierced and crushed and destroyed. Also that you could be on our side, that you could be fighting for us. And I keep asking that you, the Father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you more and more. That the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us, and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe, the same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead, and you seated him at your right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And Father, I ask you to bless us and to make your face shine upon us. Let us find grace and favor in your eyes. Expand our borders and our territory. Expand our capacity to receive everything you've given us in Christ and to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. Send us opportunities to do good and be a blessing today. And help us make the most of those opportunities. Keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right and best in your eyes. And do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. And we ask you to stretch out your hand to heal. And do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain. Through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, while we're praying there, i got a couple things coming to mind, actually. A couple connections. So this month in June of 2023, our message for this month is walking in God's best today. We've been talking about walking in the ways of God. We talked about how Abraham and Solomon, they were both told to walk in the ways of God. We see the people of Israel being told to walk in the ways of God. And then Abraham and Solomon are both told to walk before God, walk before his face. And then if they would do that, that he would establish them. Notice we're seeing the word establish in this verse here. If they would walk before God's face, God would establish them. Now, it's interesting, and and I forget the reference, but in Proverbs it says that whenever a person's ways are pleasing to God, so it means we're walking in his ways, it says he even makes our enemies be at peace with us. He gives us rest from our enemies. Now, this word for cease and desist in the original Hebrew language that's in the Psalms 8 passage can also be translated as rest, because when the enemy begins to cease and desist, it gives you rest. 
You're getting rest on every side, like we see in the examples in the Old Testament. And so, Heavenly Father, we're just asking for your help today. You're trying to teach us something about this, this verse here, about getting the enemy to cease and desist. We're just asking for your help to, to teach us whatever it is that you're trying to show us. We're asking for your help to get the enemy to establish your strength in our life, Lord. So the enemy see, begins to cease. He starts to cease and desist for good in our life. And we thank you the night Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread. He said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You laid upon Jesus the punishment that we deserved. And by his stripes you've been healed. He was crushed and destroyed by you, smitten by you. So that we could be right and holy and perfect in your sight. All through his one sacrifice. And you raised him up from the dead. And you seated him at your right hand. And you raised us up together with him. And made us sit together with him. And we get this opportunity today to remember. To remember we've been, been made one with you through the sacrifice of Jesus. And so I thank you for this bread and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Let's go and take our bread. <clears throat> then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood, pour it out for the forgiveness of sins for many. And it's the forgiveness of sins that released us from darkness and transferred us into the light. We get to have this covenant relationship with you, Father. A partnership with you. And so I thank you for this cup and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and take our juice. All right, so after our time of communion, we talk about some health and fitness tips. Because I think physical exercise is meant to teach us how to exercise our faith. Now, notice in this verse, established strength. we got to get established in strength in our physical body. How do we get that consistent practice? Practice being strong consistently day by day. There's a connection in these verses. We, have, we had talked about it last month a little bit more. About meditation. What is meditation? Doing the same things over and over. We get established in strength. And so consistent practice in your strength training to make your physical body stronger. But I hope this has been helpful for you today. If you'd like to be a part of what we're doing in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.